New York City. Before the turn of the century, it was already big, booming. Its islands begged for bridges to help cope with the traffic and keep the big city economy growing. When it opened in 1883, the Brooklyn Bridge was the longest suspension bridge the world had ever seen. Its main span of almost 1,600 feet set a new record. Before the days of computers and sophisticated machinery, it was sheer ingenuity, manpower, and daring that got the job done. In the time the Brooklyn Bridge was built, structures that high that are 200 feet or so above the water, structures that span that kind of distance were unheard of. It was unthinkable to build anything that big. Uh, it was the equivalent of the moonshot of 1969, going back almost 100 years. Steel came into use in the early part of the century, and, and along came Roebling and uh, came up with a design for steel-cabled bridge. Engineer John Roebling relied on new techniques that made it possible to bridge greater distances. As foundations to support the massive granite towers, he used pneumatic caissons. Two airtight timber boxes, half as big as a city block, were sunk to the riverbed and filled with concrete. Roebling devised a method of threading and spinning thousands of miles of cable back and forth between the towers. A traveling wheel like this one on the Golden Gate Bridge was used to shuttle individual wires from one end to the other and connect them to the anchorage. Each wheel carried two wires across. But today, there are many wheels and several wires in each wheel. So six or eight wires are carried across. The idea is the same, but the application is speeded up a little bit. <laughs> 